Because you wrote a book. Th this is But true. Let's let's start with that. I think there's nothing uh, less sexy than trying to tell someone they need to read my book. <laughs> Ironically, I think if I walked into the bookstore and I saw this, I would 100% hands down <laughs> be, <laughs> be like not stop twice to think that maybe I could find something useful you in there judge. for my life. You need to hear from someone else, trust me. I know it looks like that, but it's way more. About a war, but it's not a, a war story. The book is basically the insights into the the agendas behind the individuals that are in command. I've always been fascinated to a degree with how strangely easy a mass population can be convinced with a few good slogans that somehow it's fine to kill. War is the perfect example to pose a scenario where you you see that nothing is about what you're being told yeah i think in in every level of 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 our culture today is the same like today it's it's an extreme scenario where nothing that is said is is real no one even knows about this war that's the thing it's it's the least famous war right. with the most present time implications. Right, yeah. The implications of this war are still so current that it has defined the stake that the West has in Western Europe and, and has sort of helped retain the superpower elements that exist today. Because I've always been obsessed with the, the reality of why and, and so I, I use this as a platform to exploit the most masterful human level manipulation that I could conceive that gives insights to how a revolution is possible. What my goal was to give an experience of being immersed in the reality of the nuances of this kind of manufactured agenda. Yeah. And watch how this man, uh, carries out the most masterful manipulation at the expense of a boy who had nothing to do with the equation. It's not 100% true in how it happened. What I would try to do is create circumstances where you weren't denying what history said, you were adding to it. So you're filling in the moment before or the moment after. And I had to fictionalize certain dynamics within relationships. Otherwise, I'm just telling the events of a war and yeah, you're that's not, not it. You didn't write a history yeah. book. Going through the book, it's inevitable to, to think about 300. Yeah, I'd say the book is an obvious comparison to 300. It's a graphic novel and it takes place in Greece. I don't think it's similar in a lot of ways. 300 is about one battle took place a long, long time ago. This is still relatively current. It's within the last 200 years. And this is a layered story with lots of character stories. There's many battles. It's an entirely different uh, scenario, only the size of the book is the same. And it's a graphic novel that takes place in Greece. Another uh, comparison that it's inevitable, it's Victor Hugo's The, the, Mis the, Mis the Miserable. Uh, I'm glad you think so. It's similar in that this is the Greek version of Les Mis. Les Mis is the French Revolution, this is the Greek Revolution. So behind it all, it's really an amazing love story. And it's motivated by driving through circumstances, regardless of yourself, to help others have love. We love watching others manufacture results at the cost of others effortlessly. If you spend your whole life believing something to one day learn it's all a delusional hoax, what kind of effect does that have on that massive scale? I think we have it on like a small scale all the time. When they really reach that point of not caring about the rules and they defy the rules, but in this beautiful way and come out a winner on the other side at the expense of others. Good leadership comes by force and by circumstance, not by desire. I think that most of the people who would like to be a leader probably shouldn't be. Yeah, the circumstance 
force you into that corner. Yeah, because a good leader is vulnerable and reluctant to uh, impose harm on others, I think, and is, is too thoughtful uh, to do that willingly. So I think it, it does take you getting to a breaking point because of the circumstance, and you have no choice but to fight for your life and, and for the people that you love. His name's Ale Aragon. He's Argentinian, uh, he's amazing, he's insane. And uh, initially he started drawing out the book and he was amazing, but he had this weird stylistic choice. Then I started looking at his other books and realized he doesn't draw eyes. It's all just lines for the eye. And oh my God. And then I had to coerce him to change his style of artwork. And I came to the the conclusion, I was like, Ale, have you actually read the whole story? Because I have a feeling like if you read the whole story, you might have a different opinion. So then we didn't talk for a period of days, and then I got this email and it said, this is a fucking masterpiece. Is it a masterpiece? Whether it's good or not, you don't know until, you know, you have like enough people read it. And so he was one of the first people. And then I justified it by saying, yeah, it's a masterpiece if you don't understand English. Once he started to really understand the story and get the rhythms of the harshness of it, a lot of times I didn't have to say much. He would map stuff out so amazingly, better than what I would have imagined. The book actually is released two days before Comic-Con in San Diego, so I don't know if anybody will know it exists by that point, but if they do, we'll be there and I'll be there and it's actually happening on my birthday. Uh, so I'm stuck there, either being completely ignored or overwhelmingly harassed. <laughs>